chaos from the 2nd Battalion, 39th Infantry Regiment, 165th Infantry Brigade. Please stand for the invocation given by Chaplain Sidney Aaron. I ask you to uh, pray in your tradition as I pray in mine. Father, we thank you that we can gather here together and just lift up these men and women before us. In the book of Isaiah, it says, Whom shall I send? These sons and daughters of this nation stood up and said, Send me, O Lord. They stood in the gap when the nation called. We ask that you lead them, that you guide them, that you allow them to seek your face and to always walk in your grace. We ask that you be with the families as they support them, love them, and care for them. Allow them to help them to be instruments of freedom. Father, we ask all this in your precious name. Amen. Please be seated. The purpose of today's ceremony is to recognize the commitment of the men and women you see standing in formation today. They have chosen to serve their country as soldiers. This review is the last official formation of the training cycle. Not everyone successfully completes this difficult period of training, but those in formation today represent disciplined, motivated, physically fit soldiers who exemplify the Army's seven core values, loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, and personal courage. They are imbued with the warrior ethos and display the tenets of putting the mission first, never accepting defeat, never quitting, and never leaving behind a fallen comrade. This is an important day, and these soldiers can take great pride in their accomplishments. To the parents, families, and friends of these soldiers, Fort Jackson extends a very warm and sincere welcome. We are justifiably proud of them and truly honored they have chosen to join our ranks. Please direct your attention to the left of the formation. The units marching today from left to right are the 282nd Army Band under the command of Chief Warrant Officer 3, Kevin Pick, graduating soldiers from Alpha Company, the Battalion Color Guard, the Honor Company, Bravo Company, who have distinguished themselves and exceeded standards above and beyond, and Charlie Company. Identified by their distinctive headgear are the drill sergeants. These dedicated non-commissioned officers form the backbone of the Army's training center system, selected based on professional competence, leadership ability, and years of service. These men and women undergo intensive training to earn the right to wear their distinctive hat and insignia. With the drill sergeant hat goes the important responsibility of molding civilian men and women into soldiers. The commander of troops for today's ceremony is First Lieutenant Richard Goodman, who serves as the Battalion Plans and Operations Officer for the 2nd Battalion, 39th Infantry Regiment. He and the battalion staff are positioned on the field. The reviewing officer for today's graduation is the Battalion Executive Officer of the 2nd Battalion, 39th Infantry Regiment, Major Michael W. Chung. On his left is 1st Sergeant Robert Rodriguez, the Battalion's Senior Non-Commissioned Officer, Master Trainer, and Principal Advisor to the Commander. The commander of troops will now bring forward the colors and persons to be honored. Colors and persons to be honored. Center, march. Competence and commitment are the hallmarks of professionalism. The soldiers and drill sergeants coming forward will be recognized for their excellence in training, duty performance, and they serve as examples to all. Colors and 
persons to be honored are present. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the playing of the national anthem. It is appropriate for soldiers in uniform, all armed forces veterans, to salute the American flag. We ask our civilian guests to please remove your headgear and place your right hand over your heart as our national anthem is played. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. The soldiers most responsible for the training of these soldiers are the drill sergeants, who actually are selected by the Department of the Army. The drill sergeant campaign hat and badge have been a stoic symbol of professionalism and pride since 1962. At this time, will all past and present drill sergeants please stand as the drill sergeant of the cycle for the 2nd Battalion, 39th Infantry Regiment, recites the drill sergeant creed. Ladies and gentlemen, Major Chung and First Sergeant Rodriguez will now present the awards. Outstanding Drill Sergeant of the Cycle for the 2nd Battalion, 39th Infantry Regiment is Staff Sergeant Larry Broadwater from Azusa, California. <laughs> the 
The soldier leader of the Cycle for Alpha Company is Private Kathleen Medina from Raleigh, North Carolina. The soldier of the Cycle for Alpha Company is Private Tate Hook from DeSoto, Iowa. The soldier leader of the cycle for Bravo Company is Specialist James Kemp from Basking Ridge, New Jersey. The soldier of the cycle for Bravo Company is Specialist Douglas McFarland from Clearfield, Utah. The soldier leader of the cycle for Charlie Company is Private Sidney Thorne from Creston, Illinois. The soldier of the cycle for Charlie Company is Private First Class Peter Dadish from Boston, Massachusetts. of the cycle is from Bravo Company, Mr. Alan Charles from Mount Vernon, New York. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Battalion Executive Officer of the 2nd Battalion, 39th Infantry Regiment, Major Michael W. Chung. Good morning. Mrs. Price, Colonel Price, Lieutenant Colonel Dows, other distinguished guests, families and friends of the 2nd Battalion, 39th Infantry Regiment, Fighting Falcons, both here in person and watching live, on behalf of the Army Training Center and Fort Jackson Commanding General, Brigadier General Kelly, and the Post Command Sergeant Major, Command Sergeant Major Oates, welcome to Hilton Field and your soldiers' graduation from basic training. I hope everyone had a great time with their graduating soldier yesterday, and we thank you for getting them back here on time. Today is a special day for the battalion, the brigade, and the Army Training Center. Not only do we get to welcome 620 new warriors into the Army, but we get to do so in front of a full audience. I want to extend my sincere thanks to all the family members present and at home for supporting your soldiers throughout this journey. I would also like to thank all of the military veterans and retirees present with us today. I ask if all military veterans and retirees present with us this morning, please stand and be recognized. Thank you for your service to our great nation. Please take your seats. Without your sacrifice and the sacrifice of thousands before you, we would not be able to celebrate this special event today. I would also be remiss if I didn't recognize and thank the 282nd Army Band. The 282nd Army Band is probably the busiest band in the Army, and they always put on a first-class act. 282nd Army Band, we really appreciate your support this morning. Uh, ten weeks ago, we welcomed 650 new recruits from entry stations from all across the country. Despite the challenges, our battalion, trainees, cadre members, supported by dedicated staff and civilian employees from all across Fort Jackson embarked on the task of transforming 
the nation's most precious resources into U.S. Army soldiers. Through hard work and disciplined application of standards and protocol, we safely completed this mission. Our reward is 620 proud, determined, motivated, brave volunteers standing in formation before you who have completed the transformation from civilian volunteers to soldiers and can proudly proclaim that they are members of the greatest team ever assembled, the United States Army. These soldiers completed every training requirement placed in front of them, overcoming fear, learning to work as a member of a team, and in most cases, being separated from their loved ones for the very first time. Some of their accomplishments include the Victory Tower, the Confidence Obstacle Course, the Fit to Win Course, and the Comprehensive Rifle Marksmanship Program, throwing live hand grenades and completing numerous tasks during the Forge Field Training Exercise, which is our accumulating event, just to name a few. The men and women standing in formation today did everything asked of them, and they were given nothing. Nothing earned, but earned everything they deserve, the title of being American soldier. Now, this group of soldiers are a diverse and smart group. The youngest is 17 and the oldest is 38 years old. They represent 50 countries and territories. They also represent 57 countries. Countries like Afghanistan, Albania, China, Nigeria, Ethiopia, Uganda, Ukraine, and Japan, just to name a few. 15 have associate's degrees, 17 have bachelor's degrees, five have master's degrees. Additionally, 118 of these soldiers standing before you this morning successfully completed the Army's first ever Future Soldiers Prep Course, which is located right here on Fort Jackson. The Future Soldiers Prep Course is a pre-basic training improvement course for those civilians who are not yet qualified to join the Army due to excessive body fat or below standard test scores. The, eight, the 118 soldiers in formation this morning achieved this standard with their test scores and then completed 10 weeks of basic combat training. Let's give this group of outstanding soldiers another round of applause. Now, it's very important to know that our new soldiers did not complete this journey alone. In addition to the love and support from their families at home, they received quality training, guidance, mentorship, and coaching from a special team of dedicated instructors. I am, of course, referring to the United States Army drill sergeant of this battalion. These drill sergeants assisted your soldiers through every single task they executed in the last 10 weeks. They are the best role model our Army has to offer, and I would like for you to join me again in a round of applause for these outstanding men and women. The 620 men and women standing in formation now embark to ensure freedom and equality for our fellow Americans and our allies, relying on the courage, tenacity, and the same discipline that was required these last 10 weeks. To all of you on the field, whether you serve one term of enlistment or commit to a career in service, always remember our country is bigger than you and me as individuals. We can and we will accomplish what our country requires. As a graduate of basic combat training today, and begin the next chapter of your Army life, take the spirit of courage, tenacity, discipline, and teamwork with you. When you face challenges, and believe me, you will face them, remember you will always be a fighting falcon of the 2nd Battalion, 39th Infantry Regiment. And when you want to quit, and when you face those hand grenades of life, remember, 
You can do anything, anywhere, anytime, bar nothing. Strike strong, and victory starts here. Today's soldier is above all a warrior, adaptive, confident, and competent. As a soldier, you are totally committed to the warrior ethos, grounded in Army values, and determined to destroy enemies of the United States of America and her allies. The United States Army Soldiers Creed embodies this commitment to the soldiers on the field. The uniform you wear at this moment is more important than any outward display of your vocational choice. Your uniform is a symbol of a nation, an unspoken assurance to all who see you that you are a willing and able protector of the freedoms brought so arduously for, by all who have gone before you and those who will bravely come after. You have become what you set out to be, a soldier in the United States Army. The Soldier's Creed is your declaration of unshakable commitment to these ideals that, was, that this nation was founded upon and will continue to guarantee. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand as Specialist James Kemp leads the soldiers standing before you through the reciting of the Soldiers' Creed. of those around you, we ask that you please remain seated in the bleachers until all soldiers have passed the reviewing stand and the conclusion of the ceremony is announced. As you are approached by the American flag, it is appropriate to rise and remain standing until it has passed to your right. Once the ceremony has concluded, family members of awardees may meet their soldier under the canopy located to the left of the bleachers. All other family members and friends, meet your soldier to the far right of the bleachers at the end of the parade field. The 39th Infantry Regiment was organized at Camp Syracuse, New York on 1 June 1917 by transfer of veteran troops from the 30th Infantry Regiment. In December, the 39th was assigned to the 4th Infantry Division and in the spring of 1918, sailed for France as a part of the American Expeditionary Force in World War I. The regiment fought with such valor and distinction that it earned its famous nickname, the Fighting Falcons. After a series of inactivations and activations, the 2nd Battalion, 39th Infantry Regiment was reactivated on 1 February 1966 as part of the 9th Infantry Division at Fort Riley, Kansas. The 39th answered the call to duty once again in the late 1966 when it deployed with the 9th Infantry Division for combat in the Republic of Vietnam. The regiment participated in Operation Palm Tree, the 1968 TET battle, and the Battle of the Plain of Reeds. 
When the 2nd Battalion returned to Hawaii and deactivated in September of 1969, its battle streamers now included Counteroffensive Phase 2, Counteroffensive Phase 3, TET Counteroffensive, Counteroffensive Phase 4, Counteroffensive Phase 5, Counteroffensive Phase 6, TET 69 Counteroffensive, and Summer Fall 1969. The battalion also garnered three Republic of Vietnam crosses of gallantry with palm. Following reactivation and transfer to the Training and Doctrine Command, the 2nd Battalion, 39th Infantry Regiment, departed Fort Dix, New Jersey for Fort Jackson, South Carolina, arriving on 22 August 1990. The battalion is justifiably proud of its historic past and continue to hold these high standards of excellence in basic combat training. I right. Passing the reviewing stand is the commander of troops, First Lieutenant Richard Goodman, and the battalion staff. Attack Company is commanded by Captain Octavia Lewis from Boca Raton, Florida. First platoon is led by Drill Sergeant James Nestor from Hilton Head, South Carolina.